Hey, more about uh, Cloudland Canyon. Let's look at this old ancient booklet that I have that can show us what uh, some of the rocks look like at the, inside the canyon. Okay, here's this cool book, booklet. Maybe you can find this. Book, booklet, I don't know. I found it. I've had it for many, 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 many years. Possibly if you go to Cloudland Canyon, you might be able to pick up this pamphlet. So let's just look at some of the pictures in here. They're, they're black and white pictures. And um, I just want to show you a few things about Cloudland Canyon. Sorry about flipping the pages. This is a good because this shows you how Cloudland, um, how the, um, this shows you how anticlines turn into valleys. Um, an anticline is where the sediments bulge up. And a syncline, this is a syncline where the sediments bulge down and bulge down. This is the, um, you could look at this as the Valley and Ridge Province, and this is the Cumberland Plateau. Well, Valley and Ridge Province bulged up into these anticlines, and see how it causes these cracks? The cracks cause so much erosion that it, it turns the anticline area, the Valley and Ridge Province, into a valley. And this is actually showing how the lookout valley of Cloudland Canyon formed. Here's Lookout Mountain. And it's a very shallow syncline. So it didn't erode much, and that's why it sticks up so far above all of this. And then this part was an anticline where the lookout valley is now, which is west of um, Cloudland Canyon west of Lookout Mountain, and it turned into the, the big valley. I don't know if that makes much sense. If it doesn't, the main thing to remember is anticlines, which are upfolds, turn into valleys eventually, and synclines, which are downfolds, downfolds, turn into mountains or plateaus. That's why the Cumberland Plateau is a plateau. I don't know. This shows you the three sandstone cliffs that are on the west side of the uh, Cloudland Canyon. Each of these san sandstone cliffs is obviously means um, the, uh, the beach barrier islands and, and very lower coastal plain where the river's dumped into the ocean. In between each of those is shale layers where the ocean came up and deposited a layer of shale to cover the sand beaches. And then more erosion came in the, in the sand beaches and deltas, the like barrier islands covered the shell, and then again the shell comes up, and then again the sand conquers it as erosion takes place. Down here is the limestone area, a very rich limestone area. This is called ripple marks that you can find. There are ripple marks in the, in the stone, frozen in time. This is, uh, this is when uh, mainly uh, caused by tidal areas um, at the beach. And that's how we know this was close to the, the ocean or the foreland basin because we get these ripple marks in the sand frozen for us, which is cool. Let's see what else. These pictures are not too good. There's also what's called cross bedding, um, and that's if you picture sand being blown into dunes in a sandy desert. The sand blow sand grains blow up this long ramp, and then when they get to the top of the ramp, they fall off, uh, and so that gets frozen in the rocks too. And you can tell that the direction of the wind was that way. You find these. Um, cross beds at beaches and here's a modern day cross bed at Sapelo Island you can see the cross bedding here uh, and in this situation the sand blew up this ramp and then fell off in here someplace
main thing is that these show there was a ocean or a tidal kind of environment this is a really good picture here because see this uh, it's called um, uh, small bedding ah, that's not the word for it um, thinly bedded sandstone see it comes in thin pieces that lay on top of each other that's a sign of wave action and tidal action that tells you there the ocean was near look at this a big solid hunk of sand here totally different from this this is where there was a big storm and it filled a river channel from the bottom to the top with sand and then the river sh shifted out of that channel because there was no more it was so filled with sand it had to find another place to to flow and left this big solid massive hunk of sand so you can tell this was ocean level and then the river came uh, out further into this ocean area this this shallow ocean uh, tidal beds and then a big freshet big um, f filled up this whole channel with sand and then the river picked a new channel that's the coolest thing there is now down here at the bottom of this former river channel you're going to find all kinds of pebbles because that's the those are the coarse rocks the little pebbles that always form at the bottom of a stream because they're heavier they get to the bottom sink down to the bottom and the sands on top so if you see those pebbles very smooth rounded pebbles uh, you know you're you're looking at the bottom of a stream channel here's some of the shale layers look at this super thin bedding that that shows that there are many episodes of um, the um, the ocean muds coming up and covering, covering, covering. Maybe that each one of these uh, illustrates some kind of tidal action. I don't know. And I hope you can see that. There's a big hunk of, of the cliff sandstone that fell down and is now down here getting close to the limestone level. Uh, that'll fool you because you think you're still in the sandstone place, but it... Uh, but it's really big sandstone rocks that have fallen down from the cliffs above. Okay, I think that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. Just wanted to show you that book and uh, so that you can get it yourself if you want to, if it's still available. And if not, you got to see some of the pictures. But going out there and uh, hike those trails, I think you'll have a great time. It's really beautiful out there. And, um, you know, it kind of brings the timeless, ancient um, geologic processes to life right there before your eyes. What'd I say? <laughs> anyway, you're number one, guys. Keep me posted. Pop out.